So now we've got Chris Bell, who's going to talk about issues around Don Valley Railway and related to that. So over to you, Chris. Hi. Uh, yeah, my name is Chris Bell. I'm so, I'm I've, uh, I am the uh, lead campaigner for Don Valley Railway. Am I able to share a screen there, um, uh, Nick? <laughs> Does that do it? Let's have a look. I've got to hit my uh, button on this to get me on presentation, so I'm ready. Right. Right. Hi. Yeah. So uh, just to go through Don Valley Rail, I've got a 20 minute presentation we've got to do in seven minutes. So uh, I'll stop my I will whiz through this. Uh, yeah. Brief history. We'll I'll give you a brief history. Look at what what current current activities happening. Look at the wider aims of the project in terms of things like how it addresses climate change and other issues. If you look on the map there, you can see what the line is. Basically, our campaign is based around the fact that there's a freight railway line that serves the steelworks in Stocksbridge that has one train a day on it at best when things are going well at Liberty or whoever's running it. And then what we want to do is just have a more frequent service for passengers on this sort of fairly sort of well-established transport corridor. So, uh, uh, I could go in, I, I would have gone into a bit more history about the line. It was opened in 1841. I think we can briefly go over that. Don Valley Railway started as a sort of campaign to bring a heritage line in uh, 2004, at a time when uh, the steelworks at that point was under threat of closure and uh, wanted to sort of reuse the line for something. Uh, since then, what has happened? Uh, various things came forward. We had a heritage bid in 2008 that didn't actually get successful and the group seemed to fall apart but a few of us just stuck together to try and look at passenger options to see if we could bring a passenger service onto the line um funding we got we got a bit of money we put together scraped together about eleven thousand pounds and from that we could get a study done by arab who are the uh, sort of leading world's biggest transport consultants. Uh, they did a study which they found a shuttle on which we sort of had to focus on the most easy way, cheapest way of doing it. And we came up with this idea of a shuttle, which at the time has costed up £4.3 million, basically bringing a service that's non-stop between Deep Car and Sheffield. We originally thought this should go into Stocksbridge, but Arab told us that if we do that, we've got a half hour of each service and you could get a reasonably good service from it and have a connecting bus to connect door-to-door -door connections in Stocksbridge. So that was been the focus of our campaign. Uh, we, after that, we, we were told to look at different options. So we put together a study brief. Uh, that is, if you look at this drawing here, this is looking a simple option, just a very simple train going backwards and forwards along this line with a bus link. And then uh, we looked at other options, one that's been brought forward shortly as part of the Restoring Railways campaign is a line, it will be more like this one with a link into Stocksbridge uh, through and connecting into Nunnery and possibly going onwards to uh, other destinations in East Sheffield. Um, other things we looked at was Super Tram. Tram is really expensive for this, if you look at the costs of everything, how you put together a, uh, a railway up to, our, up to, up to Stocksbridge it makes it a bit of an expensive item to get get tram network we looked at possibly like when we looked at the costs of this getting a line up to stocksbridge alongside an expansion of the tram network in sheffield and we also looked at just extending the yellow route from from middlewood onto stocksbridge so we came up with costs i'm hoping you can see this i can't because i've got my view thing in the way on my screen yeah so if you look at them there's quite stunning differences in costs of schemes our simple shuttle, these figures actually, the 4.3 million includes a sort of what I think called optimism bias, which is something that they, uh, the industry sort of uses to sort of account for the fact that there are uh, various expenses that people incur uh, are beyond what we can forecast. But it's like, if you look at the figures, they go up astronomically. Starting on the right, the sh simple shuttle would be 2.8 million, the stopping 20 million, and then the uh, super tram options up above 100 million and they're using figures that was they're using values placed on it on things which were very optimistic in terms of what you would deliver in terms of the new infrastructure the expensive bits of it being 
electrification and creating a connection between the tram network and the uh, and the railway line, which would either be at Wicker or at um, or at Middlewood. Uh, so we, uh, we we took that forward, and we got lots of interest. I mean, one of the things we got we got involved with a guy called John Parry and Parry People Movers. He runs a train in uh, Stourbridge in the West Mid in West Midlands that goes from uh, just a little shuttle linking the town centre to the main junction on Stourbridge Junction. Uh, we also talked to ITM Power, uh, Graham Cooley, their manager. Uh, they are the leading expert proposers of, of green hydrogen and there was a prize put forward by the Bloomberg philanthropist uh, Bloomberg the former mayor former presidential candidate and mayor of New York he's got more money than he knows what to do with so he just, he just benevolent causes and there's a five million pound prize but unfortunately um we had the idea of this green hydrogen train linking stocksbridge to sheffield but this but unfortunately didn't get taken forward by uh, by sheffield city council we felt we needed more campaign clout so uh, we had a basically a petition in 2013 we got 2900 local signatures and presented this the, the, the signature to to the council julie Dorr said it's the biggest sig biggest biggest uh, petition she'd ever seen i put it in a nice big sort of box for it there um and i think it put 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 the put the scheme on 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 sheffield city council's radar and i think it led to further studies and led to inclusion in the local plan as well there's other plans for the line involving extending beyond Stocksbridge to Penniston and, and possibly on to Manchester. Looking at ones that's come, we've had the great central Liverpool to Lille freight route was brought forward. There was super tram feasibility studies, which, as I said, is expensive. Connex were a bid, a franchise bid to reopen, including opening the line, which wasn't taken forward. And there's been a uh, Translink. We did a roll on roll off ferry shuttle across the uh, across the country to relieve the A628. High speed rail that UK now called the Northern, I'm sorry, I've got to go forward another one here, a Northern network. They proposed this sort of triangular link, for high speed link between Sheffield, Leeds and Manchester using a, a sort of Penniston triangle of services coming forward. And this is one of the ideas put forward alongside high speed. Uh, I don't know if Pennypool and Penniston would have local objections to that. And I think largely you'd like it to use the, use the existing route where you can. But uh, these are ideas being brought forward because uh, I think that if you compare what happens, particularly locally in South Yorkshire with the uh, Northern Powerhouse rail plans and HS2 plans, one big thing is that they both miss this area. They, they link Liverpool, they link Leeds with Manchester and link Leeds to London, bypassing a lot of South Yorkshire stops. So, you know, I think we really ought to be campaigning for something to bring something forward that sort of fits within, if we're going to have a high speed link, that actually puts us on the map. Uh, so um, there's various, sorry? Could you be, I don't know if you heard the bell, could you be uh, winding up, Chris? Right, okay. Yeah, so anyway, more recently what we've done, we've got the Rail re re Restatement Study uh, we've, we, uh, has been done, and we've had the Restoring Our Railway Bid and the Stocksbridge Towns Fund. We've got a, a further bid that's submitted now. I think we're probably, I'm probably going to struggle to get all this in, but what we've done, this is, we, we, I can go through it if people are interested in the, uh, in the breakout groups, and we can have a look at that. But we've currently got a rest this is a picture of Wicker Archers. We've got a uh, we've got a plan to bring forward the, uh, the the scheme and see where we can go with it. Um, and I think we can look also. At, I was going to go through how it affects climate change issues. How do we power it? Can we make it zero emission as well as it being something that takes people off of out of cars? So uh, I don't know if I can leave it at that. Um, as fingers crossed for our bid and hope we can contribute to a sort of net zero future. Cheers. Thanks ever so much, Chris. That was a lot of detail that you went into and no doubt could have carried on for, for a while to give even more. It, 